Hello and welcome to From the Top, the series where we talk to the leaders in the aerospace and defence business about their thoughts, their strategies and the future. We're joined today by Paul Livingston, the Chief Executive of Lockheed Martin UK. Lockheed Martin, of course, is the world's largest aerospace business by revenue. So Paul, welcome to the programme. Now, Lockheed Martin is nothing new in the UK. In fact, you've been here for some decades. Thank you. Well, I've been here 20 years in uh, Lockheed Martin, but we've actually had a presence in the UK for nearly 80 years. A long history of partnership, a long history of working with the UK government and the UK supply chain. And we're excited, you know, in this period to be looking ahead and wondering what we're going to do in the next 80 years. And my job's to help define and then deliver that. So in all of that time, of course, there have been many changes, but I guess now the F-35 is, is really the showcase on this, isn't it? Well, the F-35, of course, is a program that the UK were part of at the very inception of it as the only tier zero, tier one partner. As we've continued to grow that uh, order book, the F-35 just recently selected by the Swiss, we continue to offer that aircraft to various governments around the world, and we're continuing to see the program grow. And as you know, it's a program where 15% of the work share is with UK companies. It supports around 20,000 jobs in the UK supply chain. And over 80% of those companies that contribute to the F-35 are small and medium-sized enterprises. So the F-35 is and will remain for years and years to come a key part of our presence in the UK. Not just in terms of its selling to the UK, but of actually being part of the DNA of the UK defence industry, something that maintains and sustains that skill base. But actually, we're now looking at what's beyond F-35, and what we're really excited about is the connectivity that is coming and between these platforms, between the F-35, but also all the other platforms that contribute to bring together a defence network. So do you see that as a, a real big change in the defence industry? I mean, people used to be in fierce competition. Has all that gone away as you get these partnerships or actually secretly are you still competing? Well, certainly our whole thing is around partnerships, whether that's partnerships with government, partners with other industry, and we've delivered on these partnerships for years. Look at the kind of the support to the C-130J with Marshall Aerospace, working in a joint venture with Babcock to deliver the Ascent Flight Training Programme. So there's a whole range of things that we do in terms of those kind of collaborations. I think where defence is going now, particularly amongst allied nations, is more around the concept of interoperability. Uh, and, and whereas we used to talk about that as all, well, we, we operated the same platform, and that was defined as interoperability. If you look at the recent success of Carrier Strike Group 21, where you've got the UK, US Marine Corps jets on the same carrier, being serviced by the same people, taking off and flying mission packages together, that's true interoperability. What we're now starting to see is the connectivity in the wider space. Some people call it JDO, Joint All Domain Operations. Some people call it MDI, Multi Domain Integration. But that's certainly where we're seeing our customers go. And in fact, our new CEO, Jim Takelet in the States, is always talking about 5G.mil, which is really around being able to connect warfighters up, share data no matter what sensors they come from, and actually deliver true effect and true force multiplication through that kind of digital interaction in real time. Now, look, he's got quite a presence in the UK, haven't you? You've got a great number of employees and a great number of facilities. But the workplace is changing. We, we see requirements for greater diversity and new ways of working. How's Lockheed Martin handling that? It's a great question. So at the moment, we have about 1,800 employees around the country, spread around 20 sites. Some of them are our own sites. Some of them are where we work on customer sites to deliver output right at the cutting edge of defense. In terms of DNI, um, it's really a good business model to go after. What we want is the best brain trust, if you like, that we can have. Because in the UK, we don't just kind of turn wrenches or bring product from America. We do true intellectual property development here in the UK. We do genuine value added work in the UK. 
If we want to draw the best people in, we have to have an environment that absolutely allows people to bring their entire self to work and be the best that they can be. So we have a whole range of kind of DNI initiatives, and broadly, even beyond Lockheed Martin, we support some of the industry-wide initiatives that are around better diversity and inclusion. There's a group called Women in Defence. They run an awards ceremony, do mentoring and things like that. I was recently asked to chair independently their 10-year strategy review. So I was thrilled to be able to get in and really get involved in how can we help make defence a better place for gender balance um, and for diversity and inclusion. And also there's um, neurodiversity is another great concept to talk about. How do we allow people who've got different experiences, different backgrounds, different ways that they interact with other people to come in and be part of a wider team that allows us to draw the best from that diverse pool of talent. But one thing we do know, Paul, is we are facing a skill shortage and things are going to change even more. The challenge is, I guess, the defence industry, people scrutinise it and don't necessarily want to work there. How do you see Lockheed Martin recruiting the number of people you want and really getting that broad base? So I think there's a few things. First of all, it's about having really great early careers offerings. So we look at apprentices, we have apprenticeship programs, we have placement programs where people come for a summer or maybe a whole year during their degree. We have graduate programs. And one of my, my favorite events of the year is when we do the, the end of course, if you like, they finish their graduate placement or they finish their apprenticeship and we bring them all together and we hold a celebration we also hold a kind of dragon's den thing where they have to pitch ideas to me and I, along with some of the other leadership we decide we pick a winning idea and we fund that idea so they can actually see that they can offer ideas that really make a difference. Um, we've just had some graduates on the stand today actually, took a picture with them and was talking to them about how they're doing it and I handed them my phone and said if you want to do a tweet from my account, you know, take, take the picture and now tweet it. And they said, well, do you want to see what we're going to tweet? And I said, no, I trust you. And I think showing that trust at an early stage, allowing young careers people to do real value added work, giving them great experiences, that's what's going to attract and retain those people. Also, I think the ability to offer a hybrid work environment. So the majority of Lockheed Martin has now moved to a four day work week, which means a bit of a longer working day but people love that flexibility of having a three-day weekend effectively every weekend. And we found that's actually increased productivity. But to that kind of particularly younger generation coming in who want to be able to work flexibly, who don't mind coming off, you know, and uh, uh, working at nine o'clock at night because that's when they feel like they're at their best. That, again, is about diversity and inclusion, allowing people to work at the time when they're most productive. Well, that might also be true for, you know, people who have caring responsibilities. They might need a couple of hours off in the middle of the day and then do something later on if they're doing childcare or looking after an elderly parent. The more we can offer a hybrid work environment, the more we can offer people flexibility and agility, that's what I think brings people to Lockheed Martin. That all sounds really remarkable, but... Paul, I do want to just check on one thing. It's a question I always ask the leaders in our industry. What is it that keeps you awake at night? Great question. Well, there's always so much to do. There's always so much opportunity out there. And actually, if you try and do too many things, it's like having too many dishes on the stove at once. So it's about picking the right dishes to cook and just focusing on delivering those. And I think for me, that's the thing I worry about sometimes. Have we picked the right things? and making sure I've got enough focus and that I'm there to support the team to deliver them. Paul Livingston, thank you. A fantastic insight into your business and your plans. Well, don't forget, if you want to see more of our From the Top series, do go to our website, wearefin.com. Thank you for watching.